welcome to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss science fiction, fantasy, cooking, the outdoors, and more. If you've been keeping track of how many dislikes Amazon's YouTube trailer for their Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series has been receiving, then you better hold on to your hats because something astounding has happened again. The trailer now has 3 million dislikes. This is truly amazing and completely demonstrates the level of anger within the broader J.R.R. Tolkien fandom. It was only five days ago when I had reported how the dislike count for Amazon's trailer had reached 1.8 million dislikes. Then only hours after I posted that trailer, the dislike count dropped to 1.1 million dislikes and I posted a video the following day on how 700,000 dislikes had disappeared, as well as the fact that Amazon is continuing to delete negative comments from the video. But Amazon's bastardization of J.R.R. Tolkien's immortal Middle-Earth sagas has so upset the fandom that regardless of how much Amazon tries to hide the fact that the fandom is extremely upset about their Rings of Power series with its unprecedented and abominable changes to Tolkien's Middle Earth and its races, the fandom intends to be heard. So no amount of race-swapping virtue signaling that executive producer Lindsay Weber has put into this bastardized series, which she attempted to justify in a Vanity Fair puff piece in February, in which she said that the series needed to, quote, reflect what the world actually looks like, unquote, can be justified with the true fandom. Nor can the efforts of showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, who are doing away with Tolkien's timeline and have attempted to justify it in the same Vanity Fair puff piece by saying, if you are true to the exact letter of the law, you are going to be telling a story in which your human characters are dying off every season, because you're jumping 200 years in time and then you're not meeting really big, important canon characters until season four. How inconvenient. As I said in my previous videos, Payne and McKay appear to believe that they can do Tolkien better than Tolkien himself. But that was not what Peter Jackson did when he was filming the Lord of the Rings trilogy 20 years ago, because the only thing that he wanted to do was to respect the world that J.R.R. Tolkien had created, and he said, as filmmakers, as writers, we had no interest whatsoever in putting our junk, our baggage into these movies. We just thought we should take what Tolkien cared about clearly. We should take those and we should put them in the film. This should ultimately be Tolkien's film. It shouldn't be ours. And what was the result? A hugely popular and financially successful movie trilogy that was nominated for and won multiple Oscars. Hollywood needs to accept the fact that audiences aren't stupid and that the fandoms are sick and tired of being guinea pigs for their attempts at retconning beloved sci-fi and fantasy universes to push their personal political agendas onto audiences that simply want to see those creations presented as their authors and creators intended. Personally, I'm very liberal but I completely and utterly disagree with the deliberate mutilations of George Lucas's Star Wars, Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek, Sidney Newman's C.E. Weber's, and Donald Wilson's Doctor Who, and now J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, which he and his son Christopher fought so hard to protect until the day that each of them died. With the exception of George Lucas, all of these creators have passed away, and the people who are speaking up to voice their frustrations at Hollywood's ongoing bastardizations of their works of art are the fans. But rather than listen to the fans, Hollywood elites attack them because they are more interested in using these immortal artworks for their own personal political agendas instead of preserving them, protecting them, and presenting them as the original artists intended them to be seen and heard for this and future generations. And this is something else that the Hollywood elites simply don't get. The fandoms are not trying to push any political agendas. Every fandom includes people from across the length and breadth of the entire political spectrum. But by and large, as a whole, the fans simply want the authors and creators' original works presented as those authors and creators intended. Nothing more. 
Thank you for watching today. And thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our YouTube channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button below and please feel free to share a comment. If you would like to see more of our videos in the future and help support this channel, please subscribe right now by clicking on the red subscribe button below. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.